Picture this, a company with no hierarchy on our left hand and well-written code on the right. We'll bring those two together and you'll have something close to a DAO. Of course, there are some nuances to it, but basically that's the big idea of a decentralized autonomous organization. Decentralized in that there is no particular limited group or person in control and autonomous in that it retains the right to govern itself. It's a flawless structure, right? Or is it? Well, in today's video, we're gonna find out the what, why, and hows of DAOs. Of course, it's not all sunshine and paradise, so make sure you stick to the end of the video where we'll give you a unique perspective on the problems faced by DAOs today. All right, let's get into it. Now, in a much more detailed way, we can define a DAO as a community-led, fully autonomous and transparent entity with no central authority that lays rules and executes decisions using smart contracts. Now, smart contracts are simply programs stored on a blockchain that run when predetermined conditions are met. So let's take an example to explain the concepts of DAOs better. Say, you and your friends decide to start an online clothing business that sells shirts. If your business was a DAO, none of you will have more say than the other. Basically, no one is the boss, while at the same time, everyone is the boss. Additionally, calculations like shipping costs, stock replenishments, profits, losses, you name it, will be automatically done by an algorithm. So ideally, your organization is completely decentralized in terms of distribution of power and the algorithms enable the business to run itself. DAOs have many use cases. There are DAOs that govern decentralized finance projects such as MakerDAO and media DAOs like Bankless DAO that help the bankless movement grow via education. There are even gaming DAOs. There really is no end to the use cases here. Let's put it this way. Say you find a cause you believe in. You think of a unique way to structure your collective incentivization schemes, the kind of culture you want to promote, and so on. And if you can rally enough community support around this, then you can potentially form a new DAO. So speaking of forming a new DAO, how do DAOs sign up members and fund activities? Well, the earlier stages of starting a business mostly involves raising funds, right? Well, similarly, most DAOs raise funds and fill the DAO treasury by issuing DAO governance tokens for participants to join. So these tokens are put up for sale, giving holders automatic membership into the DAO and voting powers. Simply put, if you hold this governance token, you have a say in how the organization is run. Now, these tokens generally serve a threefold function. First is that they help raise funds for the DAO, which can be used to pay members for carrying out certain tasks. Secondly, they help ensure that members are committed to the project. Look at it this way. If you hold governance tokens, you want them to go up in value, right? Well, since you've invested in the project, it only makes sense to help the project succeed. After all, it is now your project too. And then thirdly, the governance tokens allows members to vote on the direction and key decisions of the DAO, and more on this later. Over time, some DAOs also conduct treasury operations to generate additional sources of revenue to further their project goals and causes. This includes operations like staking, where users commit their crypto assets and in turn, earn rewards. All right, so let's assume this DAO is up and running. How does it operate and make decisions? Well, many DAOs organize themselves in a manner similar to a corporation, so they'll split into departments like marketing, sales, development, and so on. However, whereas corporations typically have a rigid top-down command structure, DAOs are fluid and aim to have a flat organizational structure. You know how company heads occupy the poshest office on the highest floors, well, DAOs will have this imaginary huge table in that office and everybody gets a seat at this table. Therefore, within the individual apartments, there are no managers in the traditional sense. Instead, a leader who issues directives may be present. So what if you're not in a department? Well, while not every DAO member serves in a specific department, every member has the right to write proposals for the entire DAO to vote on. 
So let's take an example. Say we submit a proposal fee that the transaction fees of our network should be reduced by 1%. We'll write our proposal, which will be shared with the community on public forums or on Discord channels and debate it thoroughly before being put to a vote. And finally, votes are recorded onto the blockchain itself, making the process and outcomes fully auditable and transparent. And this transparency is what allows DAO members to vote with confidence on issues that matter to the DAO and helps build trust and align the interests of the majority of the DAO members. Okay, so we have gone through how a DAO is formed and how decisions are made, but there is one final stage, which is implementation. So how do DAO decisions get implemented in a transparent manner? Remember that DAO members are pseudonymous, therefore it's critical that they're able to operate in a trustless fashion. Trustless means that you do not need to place your sole trust in any one stranger institution or third party in order for the project to function. One of the ways this is implemented in DAO is through smart contracts, which are algorithms that execute automatically once certain preset conditions are met. For instance, the condition might be a certain threshold number of votes that needs to be attained for the algorithm to execute. Now, what we have looked at for the most part is how an ideal DAO should function. But the DAOs of today are in no way perfect. Despite the different structures, DAOs seem to be a never-ending cycle of trade-offs. They get one thing right, but have to sacrifice another. So let's look at these trade-offs. So first we have accessibility versus accountability. Now, thanks to blockchain technology, DAOs are typically always open. Anyone can start or participate in a DAO paving the way for global access to different projects and communities. Participants are judged based on their merits and contributions, not their background. However, this ease of accessibility is a dual-edged sword. The thing is, a DAO can't regulate every single action, or more importantly, completely remove the centralized layers of power that eventually pop up. So when you take a closer look, the DAOs of today are still fundamentally dependent on individuals or entities, and some of which may be pseudonymous. Now think of a situation where the multi-sig holders of the treasury wallet decide collectively to run away with investors' funds. There's not much the community can do about it. Okay, the best case scenario is that parties who have known identities may be subject to legal enforcement, but doesn't that take us some steps back? Since there is some reliance on a third party, in the worst case scenario, their identities are never known due to the pseudonymous nature of DAOs. Either way, the reality is that all members of a DAO rely almost exclusively on faith in select individuals who have the option of foregoing any accountability for their actions. Okay, on to the next trade-off, decentralization versus efficiency. We previously mentioned DAO's democratic approach to making decisions. Well, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution, therefore it has to be tweaked for practicality. For instance, most DAOs usually employ a hybrid democratic approach, possessing a flat hierarchy that incorporates elements from representative democracy, where specific individuals are elected to act on behalf of the community. So, you trade off decentralization for efficiency, but does this trade off make sense for operational efficiency? Well, it makes some sort of sense, and some decisions may be too trivial or highly time sensitive and cannot wait for a two week governance vote. However, how the individuals choose to exercise their power to act in the best interest of the DAO or project is often up for debate. So as much as the decisions made on behalf of the community may be the right ones, some would still argue that this goes against total decentralization principles. Okay, on to another interesting trade-off, openness versus control. The general expectation for DAOs is that they eventually adopt a governance token model. Usually the weight of one token equals one vote, similar to how shares in a company or voting in a democracy traditionally works. Now there are variations, but for the most part, the more tokens you have, the more voting power you have. In other words, whales, people who hold a large number of tokens, 
have the largest influence. Now, the lesson here is that while the DAO concept of one token, one vote may seem the fairest on the surface, it opens the DAO up to parties taking unintended advantage of these features. There are even cases where some parties have taken advantage of flash loans to manipulate a vote. Basically, a huge loan of the governance token is taken out and is used to vote. And this has happened before in DAO run protocols such as Maker. Well, I think that we have to accept that there will always be some form of centralization in DAOs, but all in all, DAOs are changing the landscape of not just the internet, but the world. How we organize ourselves online is in turn going to influence and give rise to new ways of restructuring society. And it's honestly exciting to see how DAOs will give states and corporations a run for their money in the future, right? Well, let us know in the comments what you find most interesting about DAOs and remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on all our socials for future alpha. See ya.